What's up, math friends? Today, we are going to be talking about the stereographic projection of the sphere onto the plane. Why would we talk about something so trivial? Well, it's not really trivial, and we need the explicit computation, the explicit coordinate transformation, the explicit mapping for a discussion that we're going to have later about conformal compactifications of, of vector spaces. So uh, I thought it'd be worth putting into a video. So let's get started. with consider the sphere embedded into r3 in kind of the standard way that is if x y and z are your typical orthonormal basis for for r3 then the equation x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals to one gives you kind of the if you like the, the unit sphere um the standard if you like uh, embedding of that of that three sphere um into r3 the stereographic projection uh, if you're unfamiliar, is a way that we can map most of the of the two sphere onto the plane in uh, in the following way: take the north pole, that is to say, the point zero zero one <laughs> uh, on the sphere, and then take any other point anywhere else on the two sphere and draw the line from the north pole to that point, and continue that line through the plane. The plane at z equals zero. That defines a map from all of the two sphere except for the north pole. <laughs> onto the entirety of the plane. Um, and that, that map is actually a diffeomorphism. And what we will be interested in today is the explicit form of that diffeomorphism and its inverse. To that end, the first thing you're gonna to want to do is encode the concept of the North Pole. So we already know that that's the point zero, zero, one. And then we want to encode uh, the equation for the line in R3 that connects the North Pole to some arbitrary point on the complement, if you like, of the two sphere relative to, to that North Pole point. So to do that, we'll use some vector uh, technology. That is to say, we're gonna use the vector n, representing the North Pole, and the vector p, representing the point x, y, and z <laughs> on the two sphere. So in other words, the components of the vector p uh, are constrained to sit on the surface x squared plus y squared plus z squared. So to derive that equation, we simply consider the difference <laughs> p minus n quantity times t plus n, the vector for the North Pole, so that when t equals zero, you're at the North Pole, and when t is equal to one, you're at the point p. So armed with that line, we can now make the map by simply asking, what points on that line, what values of t, if you like, um, define the intersection of that line for a generic point p uh, with the plane at z equals zero. And that hopefully is easy enough. We simply set the third component of that vector. <laughs> um, if you like this l, l of p equal to zero. And what do we find? z minus one quantity times t plus one is equal to zero. Solving for t, if you like t star, where it, uh, the line intersects the plane, we find that t, this value, is equal to 1 over 1 minus z. Easy enough. So <laughs> you can see that there is a singularity in this formulation here that's sneaking up, but that singularity exists at the North Pole, that is when z equals 1, so no big deal so far. Great, so let's plug this back in to our definition of that vector, that line, that L of p. Um, so L of p at t equals to 1 over z, 1 minus z is equal to x over 1 minus z, y over 1 minus z, and 0, of course, because we're on the plane z equals 0. And believe it or not, that, that is your diffeomorphism. Just to be absolutely clear, let's define coordinates on the plane a and b, and those are defined to be a equals x over 1 minus z, and b is equal to y over 1 minus z, or x, y, and z are constrained, once again, to live on that two sphere, so that x squared plus y squared plus z squared is equal to one. And of course, the domain of our map is uh, everything but the North Pole.
As it turns out, we're also going to need the formulae for the inverse of this stereographic projection. That is to say, we need a mapping from the plane to the complement uh, of the North Pole on the two sphere. That is to say, we're going to need x, y, and z as a function of these coordinates a and b. Uh, and so to do that, what I'm going to do, I just do it as a claim. So I'm going to claim that um, the, these that the explicit form of that map is given in terms of the component functions, let's say x is equal to 2a over a squared plus b squared plus 1, y is equal to 2b over a squared plus b squared plus 1, and z is equal to a squared plus b squared minus 1 over a squared plus b squared plus 1. Okay, proof. Okay, constructing the inverse isn't really that hard. To do. To start, we simply take the equation for the sphere, x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals one, subtract z squared from both sides, <laughs> right? So that we find that x squared plus y squared is equal to one minus z squared, and that can be factored, right, as one plus z times one minus z. Good, now divide out by one minus z quantity squared both sides. And on the left-hand side, what you see is something that looks a sure lot like under the diffeomorphism, a squared plus b squared. And on the right hand side, you see one plus z divided by, excuse me, one plus z divided by one minus z. So you can simply solve for z uh, in terms of a squared plus b squared, and you find exactly what we had anticipated uh, in the claim. So good, so now all we have to do is show that uh, the formulae for x and y are consistent. And to do that, we simply divide out. It's it's quite easy to show. But it's nice to have the explicit form of the map and it's inverse. <laughs> so clearly it is a diffeomorphism since it is differentiable and the inverse exists. Good, great, awesome. Finally, I added some notes um, in the blog post associated to this video in the write-up about how you can apply these ideas to the Mercator projection uh, for the problem of <laughs> creating precision maps um, on a piece of paper from a spherical thing like, like the Earth. Um, so it's an interesting practical real-world application, but the stereographic projection actually induces a metric on the plane that is not flat, but it's conformally flat. <laughs> so uh, we'll show that next time. All right, I am off to the beach. I will see you next time.